This is Google Apps Updates Roundup number 121. In this episode, I will show you more than 36 new features in seven different Google Apps. So make sure all your apps are up to date and let me show you what's new. Let's start the episode by talking about the YouTube app and here I'm going to show you three new changes. The first change you will see when you open any of the videos, you will notice that this area is now more compact. Previously, we used to have the channel name and the subscribe button in a separate line at the top, but now they are embedded in the carousel and you can only see the profile picture of the channel, not the full name like before. Then next to it, you will see the subscribe button. After that, we have the rest of the buttons as usual, but the share button is also smaller than before. So the overall look is a lot more compact than the previous version. I also came across a new feature that's not commonly available and I only found in this very specific video. When you take a look here next to the time, you will see the chip that usually takes you to the chapters, but this one says in this video. When you tap on it, it opens the timeline where you can see the script and auto scrolling. But when you scroll down a bit, you might see some suggested content to let you know more information about the discussed topics in this video. And when you tap on this card, it will take you to a separate page where you, where you can learn more. In this case, they are talking about an Egyptian actor and you see a description here and some suggested videos from YouTube. And lastly, in the shorts, you will see smaller buttons with brand new icons that will make things easier if you're holding the phone with one hand. The next app we have is YouTube Music and here I'm gonna show you eight new changes. Starting with the home page, you will see multiple changes. The first one is the redesigned header colors. They are getting this new glowing gradient colors at the top. And when you take a look at the speed dial, you will see that the I'm feeling lucky button got replaced with a dice like design. And every time you tap on it, it will change the dice number and here is how it animates. And it keeps playing random songs for you. Also, now you get access to the 2025 music recap and instead of going to the library, then the profile picture like before, which will make things easier for you. Talking about the 2025 recap, it got a complete redesign this year. When you open it, you will see multiple categories like top tracks, your playlists, artists, and so on. In addition to the summary, and when you start the recap, you will see brand new animations and the graphics that we've never seen before that makes the recap look a lot better. And here you have the ability to download as usual each image separately. And let's try to open some of the individual categories. As you see here, you can also save to library in some situations. And when you go to the summary, here is how it looks. So this is the new design for the 2025 recap. And when you scroll down a bit, you will see the musical photo album section, which will show you some photos inspired by the top tracks you listened to. And then you have your recap playlists. And then we have the YouTube music playlists and they got redesigned thumbnails that match the recap animations and the graphics. Moving to the now playing screen, you will see two new changes. First, the radio button is now called mix plus the like animation got updated and here is how it looks now. Under the samples page, you will see all the buttons on the side are now bigger and using different icons. And when you go to the search, when you take a look here at the history, you will see that all the artists I have in the history got this new ellipsis button that will give you quick access to things like shuffle play, start mix, share, subscribe, or remove from library. And lastly, under the library page, you will see a brand new filter at the top called the profiles. I'm not sure if it's new or not, but this is the first time for me to see it. The next app we have is Google Photos, and here I'm gonna show you 10 new changes. Starting with the memories, you will see multiple tweaks. The first one is the much bigger thumbnails when compared to the previous version. Plus, Google started to use some new designs for the thumbnails. They are using material U shapes, and if the memory is related to the number of years, you will see this big number cut out in the memory thumbnail with new fonts and colors. And I think it looks amazing. Plus we got that 2025 recap, same as YouTube music, and it's stunning. It has a lot of graphics and animations with great music in the background. You can tap on the share button, which will allow you to share it as a video. You can replace people or photos by using this menu. It will show you the people so you can replace or remove. And then you have the option to edit with CapCut. And finally, you can save it to your library. But because I saved it already, it says saved here at the bottom. 
And, and Google did something really nice this time. And instead of sharing the full recap with people, you have the ability to share certain sections. This one says total photos in 2025, top people in 2025, top places, and finally highlights of 2025. So you can share specific parts of the recap and instead of sharing the whole thing if you want. Also keep in mind that you can access this recap from the collections page. You will see it as a suggestion at the top right corner in this area. The add to album overlay card also got updated and now you get more options like the ability to search your albums before adding. You have the ability to sort the albums showing in the card with the last modified album title or most recent photo in addition to the ability to create a new album and when you swipe up you can scroll through all of them. The photo editor also got some design tweaks. The first one is the squared handles for the cropping instead of using the curved ones and I think it makes more sense now. Plus when you select something in the photo at the top you will see two buttons one to refine the selection like this and the other is to deselect whatever you selected. Now let's talk about the highlight video feature that got multiple changes and the first one when you go to the create tab and scroll all the way down you will see a new section for the highlight video that includes multiple templates to choose from. Here you can see the font used, the music, the duration and number of photos and you can hit the play button to get an idea about how the template looks. So let's take a quick example. So this is one of the templates and if you like it you can simply tap on it and then select the photos and videos you want and then hit next. It will automatically create the highlight video for you and give you the option to edit everything exactly the same way as before, no difference. And this is how it works. So you can choose the template and then create your highlight video. Also when you tap on the plus button at the top right corner from the photos tab and then choose highlight video, now you will see two tabs at the top, one dedicated for the new templates I just showed you and the other one called select content which will take you to the old highlight video page that we got used to. And lastly, when you choose any of the templates like this one, for example, you will see a new button here at the bottom left corner called help me select with the AI star next to it. But tapping on it doesn't do anything new. It just takes you to the same old highlight video creation page. So I'm not sure why this button exists. Now let's talk about Google Maps and here I'm gonna show you three new changes. The first change is the new color feature Google released with November 2025 Pixel Drop, the new power saving mode in Google Maps, and it's only available on the Pixel 10 models. So here is how it works. When you start the navigation to any place like this and then press on the power button, it will immediately take you to the power saving mode. Everything is in black and white and you don't have any control over the app. But once you tap the screen like this, it takes you back to the standard mode and you can switch between them like this. I tested this feature in real life and compared the battery consumption with the standard mode to give you an idea about how much battery you can save with this new feature. So let's take a look. I started a 43 minutes navigation session at 2.29 p.m. with 80% battery remaining. Thankfully from my experience there is no delay in the navigation and it updates my exact location as good as the standard mode. You will also notice that the display refresh rate is lower than normal in this mode and that's why we have these horizontal lines moving on the screen because the camera's shutter speed is faster than the display refresh rate but you definitely don't see this with your naked eye and I found the refresh rate to be good enough to follow along. So after a total of 43 minutes of navigation while having my phone connected to the car's Bluetooth to play some music, it consumed a total of 6% battery, which means 0.14% per minute. Now let's compare this number to the standard mode. At 4.48 p.m. I started another navigation session for 28 minutes with 59% battery on the standard mode. This time I took 30 minutes to arrive, not 28, and the phone consumed the same 6%, which means 0.2% consumption per minute. So when you do the math, you will see that the power saving mode consumes 8.4% per hour versus 12% per hour for the standard mode, which is a difference of 3.6%. But I think this number could be better because I tested the standard mode just one hour before the sunset, so the sun was not as harsh as the 2.30 p.m. time when I tested the power saving mode, so the display was not always on peak brightness, 
like it did while testing the power saving mode. So that's it when it comes to the power saving mode and the second change is the new guides I started to see in the explore card while navigating certain places. You can see the source of each guide at the bottom left corner in a chip and when you open it, it will show you multiple places based on the area you are currently exploring and here you can do multiple things you can share this guide with others you can save the full guide as a list to your library and when you go to the library you will see it under the u tab and as you see i have it now it's called what to do near the burj khalifa and you can remove it at any time if you want then you will see the photo of the place a description and the source link you can also sort the places by distance or recently edited or add any individual items to your library like this and choose the list you want to add it to. So this is how it works and I think this is a really nice touch. Last but not least, when I open the overview card of some malls like Dubai Mall for example and then scroll down, I started to see this new indoor map section with the expand arrows. Tapping on it takes me back to the top and doesn't do anything different because when I search for Dubai Mall, I already get the indoors map immediately on the screen. So I'm not sure why Google added this section in the overview card. Before jumping to the next chapter, let me show you the latest pack added to the wallpapers by in-depth tech reviews app. I used most of them throughout the video to show you how they look in real life. And by the way, you can download any of these wallpapers locally on device which will allow you to apply the Android 16 wallpaper effects on them. If you are interested in my wallpapers, you will find the Google Play Store link in the description to download the app. And now let's get back to the video. The next app we have is Google Chrome and here I'm going to show you three new changes. The first change is a visual tweak. Now when you go to the tab switcher, if you have a tab group like this, when you give it a color using this color picker, the whole card background color matches your selection while previously it was only limited to the dot at the top left corner. The second change is the search bar at the top is now docked so it doesn't move when you scroll up and down. Lastly when you go to settings then go to payment methods and scroll all the way down you will see a new option here called loyalty cards and the description says manage your loyalty cards in google wallet. When you tap on it it just opens the wallet app so I'm not sure if this new option will allow Google Chrome to suggest your loyalty cards while filling forms or this is just a quick shortcut to the wallet app. Next, Google app. And here I'm going to show you four new changes. Let's start with circle to search as it got three new changes. The first one is the integration with the AI mode. So for example, when you do a search like this, previously we used to get a text box at the top that will allow you to add certain modifications to your search like looking for a different color or a different variant but now you can use the AI mode to ask anything about your search not just adding some modifications so for example I can ask about the release date of this phone and it will give me all the information I need using the AI mode as you see here which will give you a lot more flexibility. The second change is the new scroll to translate feature. Previously, to translate a page like this using circle to search, it used to only translate whatever you see currently on the screen. But now when you trigger the translate option, you will see a new button called scroll and translate. Tapping on it will allow you to scroll the page and you will notice here at the top that I have the screen sharing enabled. And when I start scrolling, it will take its time and then translate to my favorite language. Also, I have a bubble here at the bottom of the screen that will allow me to stop the translation or I can tap on it to dock it to the side, but I cannot move it. It will always stick to this area. And every time I start scrolling, it will take its time and then translate the page and you will see the glowing animation here around the edges of the screen. The third change is a visual tweak. Now when you highlight text in circle to search, it will use Google colors as a background. As you see here, we have the green, the blue, and the red, which looks a lot better than before. And the last change in this chapter is related to the Google app itself. When you go to the activity tab, now you get access to the AI mode chat history from here. 
and you can also delete any individual items or view the full history by tapping on the arrow and when you open the chat you can immediately start the conversation again the next app is gemini and here i'm going to show you seven new changes starting with the home page we got a much simpler and cleaner design with this new gray background color plus the suggestions are now a lot bigger the model selector at the bottom now got simplified no more different names or confusion all you get here is fast or thinking with 3 pro which makes things a lot easier when it comes to the tools you will see this new visual layout option which is under google labs because i'm already registered for google labs that's why i have it and it's tagged with the labs logo i'm not sure yet what it does exactly but i will give it a try to see how it works when it comes to the side menu we got this new my stuff section that will include all the documents photos or videos you generated using ai from here you can quickly open the photo share it copy it or save it and also jump to the chat if you want and when it comes to gemini live now it captions your own words not only gemini words like before if you have the feature activated and as you see my words are labeled as you and when you take a look at the release notes of gemini you will see that google started to roll out the gemini 3 pro model starting the 18th of november 2025 so most people do have access to it already even the free users but there are differences in the usage limit and if you want to know your limit you can simply head over to this article and scroll down you will see a table that will explain the limits of everything and i'm gonna leave this link in the description if you want to check it out so that's pretty much it for today these are all the new changes i wanted to show you in google apps please reach me out on social media if you spotted any new feature to include in my future episodes but for now thanks so much for watching and see you in the next video